Hey, Makoto kiddos. Um, I'm going to read a story for you guys about fractions. We've been starting to work on fractions this week in math, and we'll be working on it some more next week also. Um, we'll be spending quite a bit of time on fractions for the next little while. So I'm going to do some stories, so that way you guys have a chance to hear the stories, and maybe they'll help you understand it more also, along with the videos and different things I've been sending out for Nearpod. I'm hoping that helps you, okay? Plus, stories are always cool to hear too, right? The title of the story is A Fraction's Goal, Parts of a Whole. Fractions are a portion, a piece, or just a part of something that is larger, like this segment on this chart. Or look at this round pizza. It can be cut in two, which means that would be, each of those would be a half, right kiddos? Because there's two of them, so one half of the whole pizza. Or four, or six, or eight, or more. Whatever best suits you. So if you cut it into four, it would be called fourths. And if it were cut into six, there would be six, it'd be sixths. Ugh, hard to say, it'd be a sixth. Um, and for eight, it would be called eighths. But let's say that it's cut in two and you pick up one slice. If you've got one piece of two, it's half to be precise. So you'd write it like this, one half, the numerator and the denominator. Next, cut the pizza into four and take, east, and take one single piece, one fourth, and that's one fourth. Now, can you see how the size has been decreased? So a half is, if you're having half of it, and then now you have one fourth of it, one fourth is less than that one half, right? Because you're cutting those into smaller portions. So now if someone wants one half, two slices will be needed. Two fourths and one half are the same. They're different ways to read it. Do you see that kiddos? So one half of the pizza is still equal to like the two fourths because you put those two together and it is two out of those four is the same as one half. They're just written a little differently and they're just read a little differently. Fractions also work with groups like two thirds of the players. So that would mean two out of the three players. Seven eighths of the jugglers, which would mean seven out of all of the eight of them. And one half of the mares, that means you split those two down the middle, right? One out of the two. Pretend you have three uncles and two come for a visit. So only two out of your three uncles came, so that's two thirds. That would mean two thirds were there. That's not so hard, now is it? Let's see the third one showed up to join in all the fun. That's one whole group of uncles cause three out of three thirds equals one, right? Three and th three and three thirds is equal to one whole, right? Because all three are there. Before when there were just the two uncles there, it was two thirds. So two out of the three were there. Fractions come in handy if you are if you ever help with baking. You'll see them in the recipes for breads and cakes you're making. Three quarters or three fourths tablespoon of salt. 
And they're usually written on the little spoons and stuff when we're cooking too. You could ask mom or dad if you could look at some of those in the kitchen if you haven't seen those before. They, those are really good reminders of how those would look. If you're adding two thirds a cup of flour, that would be smaller than a whole cup. It'd be two out of the whole, which because three and three thirds is a whole, so that would be a whole cup. So two thirds of a cup means you're not quite all the way there for the full, for the whole cup. Five eighths of a cup of chocolate chips, that means five eighths, means five out of the whole. If it was a whole cup, it'd be eight eighths which is equal to one whole. And then you bake for half an hour. Well, kiddos, we all know half an hour is 30 minutes. You guys were right. So that's not a whole hour, is it? That's half of it. The numerator is the word for the number that's on top. Like the three that's in, we lost three tenths of this year's crop. Oh boy, so let's count this. One, two, three. So there's the three that was lost. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there were 10 rows, which makes the whole crop, but they lost three out of that 10, so it's three tenths. If the whole crop had grown, it would be 10 out of those 10 rows, which would have been equal to the whole. Now, if they had only lost two of these rows and this other one here had grown, they would have only lost two tenths. So that would have meant that they had a little bit more if they hadn't lost that three. Right, kiddos? The number underneath the slash is a denominator. Note that nearly all the time the bottom numbers are greater. So not every time, it's not like a specific rule, but most of the time when you're going to see a fraction, the bottom number, which is your denominator, will be bigger than your top number, which is your numerator. So the bottom number is telling you how many things there are to come out of. So like 12, that means there would be 12 things it needed to make it a whole. If this one is only a one, that means we would actually need 11 more to make a whole number. So this is one twelfth of the whole number or one out of the two for the whole number. Whoops, did I go too far? Nope, I didn't, oopsie. Okay, so fraction can be used in pizzas, planes, and cranes, and plants. You'll know more than just a portion if you give them half a chance. So what's in a fraction, do you know? And we talked about some of these, one half, one third, three thirds, because that's the whole, one fourth, two fourths, which is actually the same as a half, right? See that kiddos? Three quarters, which means three of them are filled. Five eighths. Whoa, those look like they're similar, don't they, kiddos? And this one is seven eighths, so it's not quite a whole, almost. Three tenths, and this one would be one twelfth. Thanks for reading with me, kiddos. Um, hopefully fractions are going okay for you. Um, we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about it next week. Talk how you're feeling, um, and I, maybe I can help you out more if you're needing a little extra help with those too. Okay, kiddos? Um, make sure you go on Nearpod and, um, and our vocabulary because there's some good activities there for you to work with those.